Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to continue our water series and today we're going to take a closer look at ozone water treatment. So let's dive right into it. Now first, before we understand how we use ozone to treat our water, we have to understand what the heck is ozone. So ozone is basically O3. So normally, O2 is the normal state of oxygen. But if you have certain scenario, you can create O3, basically something like this. Generally, it will be only like this much and basically like this much. But uh, if you have one extra free oxygen, basically O2 is the stable state. But if you break them apart, they both will become unstable. They will try to bond with whatever is possible nearby. So if they bond with another O2, then they create O3. This is what happens in our uh, basically upper atmosphere where we have oxygen. So oxygen is there. So you have a lot of O2. But ultraviolet comes in. Ultraviolet is very high energetic and like in specific wavelength. And O2 absorbs it. Now when O2 absorbs it, the energy is like energy cannot be created, not destroyed. There is a consequence of that it breaks apart now once that bond is has been broken apart that create two unstable oxygen basically instead of o2 now you have two o that has an ionic state that is unstable that want to bond with each other now given the fact that earth atmosphere has a lot of oxygen it ends up bonding with another oxygen that creates the o3 now o3 has this one annoying problem that it is have very very short half-life basically o3 if you take o3 and put it in a container best container you can find best seal hermetically sealed cryogenically frozen it will serve decay basically in few days you will end up with nothing and basically you, it's not like it will disappear into nothing but it, it will become from o3 to o2 because o3 is inherently unstable so you have to understand that you cannot uh, make a tank full of ozone i mean like you can do that but for only for a few minutes because it will start decaying instantaneously and uh, basically in a matter of few days even thousand liters will turn into nothing so this is a very critical aspect it is very unstable it does not have very long life now this also adds uh, one another advantage to it basically O2 even though it's very stable it's not so stable that it will not bond to another anything that's why your oxygen in the atmosphere can give corrosion to metals also now in terms of when we are talking about ozone ozone is so unstable that it wants to get rid of that oxygen it is unstable right now so it wants to give rid of one whole oxygen and it is itself is not uh, basically stable enough it is the most powerful oxidizing agent there is on the planet flat out there is no element that is more powerful than this in terms of oxidizer no chemical no compound nothing so if you want to oxidize something ozone is your best bet now this also creates uh, gives the unique ability that it can bond with almost anything it, including salts including metal ions including almost anything so because it's like the most powerful uh, oxidizing agent that give, gives them the ability to bond with almost everything so how do we use it in water now in uh, if you have been following my water series you must have learned the fact that in water we have three things physics chemistry and bio now uh, when you are talking about basically biology this takes care of all of it basically bacteria and virus both are destroyed by it it does not suffer with the same consequences of ro ro can take care of big protozoa and big fungal and all that very easily but viruses can come through it that's why uh, whenever you have ro you always have to have uh, uv treatment after it otherwise bio matter is uh, like virus can still pass through in this nothing nothing passes but like flat out it's almost same level as uv in terms of sterilization now instead of sterilizing it destroys the cell because it's a the a cell wall of all the microorganism is inherently in a stable state this extra unstable oxygen atom that comes and destroys it and it i'm talking about destroying it basically after a ozone treatment you won't be able to find uh, basically uh, intact cell you will find uh, guts Basically, it will be destroyed. It's not like a, a UV sterilization where, okay, it's active, now it's dead. It's not like that. It's like active, destroyed. So it destroys bioorganics completely. Like you put ozone in one corner, it's done. It takes care of it. As long as you have enough of it. Now, this takes care of biological aspect. Okay, your water is now pure of any bacteria and virus that can harm you. Awesome. But this also removes ions. Now, this is the reason why anybody is even interested in ozone treatment. Because if you have a lot of salts, if you have a lot of sulfur, if, especially if you are talking about uh, places which deals with fertilizer, it is the one of the few things that can handle a fertilizer runoff. Basically, if you have a lot of fertilizer land, fertilizer once it starts to seep into what we call groundwater, it contaminates it. Like urea is a very bad thing. Like urea contaminated water is very uh, unsafe for almost anything it will kill fish it will kill anything basically so you want to remove urea but the only way to remove urea is ozone because ozone uh, basically think of this way or uh, urea is this big ozone breaks it down to smaller compounds which is less harmful 
or almost uh, it uh, neutralizes it now it also changes taste many times many places if you drink water directly from a well you will know the taste is very different now ozone changes taste because it is ionically bounding basically it's removing let's say magnesium it's removing sulfur it's removing all those things all those things combined ends up changing the taste basically it is a water flavor control sometimes people like the taste sometimes people don't like but it does affect the taste it's not like a RO where taste won't be affected this will affect the taste now fertilizer neutralizing that's inherently means if you are talking about basically soap if you're talking about uh, industrial runoff you have to utilize ozone because ozone is one of the few things that can handle these sort of things then how do we deal with it basically you know for a fact that you can't carry o3 so we have to create it on site how do we do it well uh, basically we take water we take electricity and we add catalyst now if you are familiar with the electrolysis this sounds awful like it yeah it is electrolysis basically you are over producing uh, oxygen by using high voltage and certain catalyst and if high voltage is high enough it will allow some uh, amount of o3 to be created but you have to make sure that uh, hydrogen is vented off somewhere else now it does allow for very efficient creation and does allow very high amount of o3 to be created that is like right now in all large water plants this is used then you have another option is basically you use what how our ozone is created you create uv lamp and mix it with the air basically uv light of basically 185 nanometer will uh, basically if you have normal air running through it it will uh, basically make it into o3 uh, very low concentration in terms of concentration this will not make too much of it but it is efficient and it does not create any byproducts now another that is like a bit between between uh, making with water or making with air it's basically you use corona discharge basically you have high voltage and lightning between them now this is uh, this happens naturally also when you have lightning strikes this is created by default now we want to create it artificially so if you are talking about a water treatment plant you may have uv you may have uh, basically uh, electrolysis kind of bigger brother of electrolysis so all these things are used to create on site and uh, these, these are very energy intensive so how do we implement it now this is completely invert of basically uv in uv you have to have very clean water this does not like very clean water. i mean like it's not like you can't use it in clean water it's just people generally don't put it at clean water they basically if you have water treatment plant you will put it at very early stage before filtration the reason for that is uh, it creates byproduct so you have to remove the byproduct afterwards anyway so might as well do it before uh, basically uh, things water is filtered enough so the benefit of that it uh, also allows you to do uh, basically activated carbon you have to do that because ozone is the actual thing there it's not a radiation it's actually physical element there it creates physical byproduct which you have to remove using activated carbon now activated carbon neutralizes it takes care of all the heavy art particles and ions that are created the benefit of that it also helps in coagulation basically if you have a filter basically a uh, heavy pond of water or for water treatment if you put ozone into it it will help uh, basically small ions to become big stable icons uh, basically it will become heavier salts that will allow them to sediment much more easily so it actually helps uh, basically in another process that's why people want to do ozone before it goes into activated carbon this will help uh, activated carbon to remove much more efficiently so it's not something like you do at the last basically uv is the something you do at last this is something you do at at first now you have to make sure in same way in uv you have a uh, basically you have to make sure the radiation exposure is matched in this contact time must be uh, taken care of basically they will tell you like okay for uh, one ton of water you must have ozone this much concentration of ozone for at least 15 minutes you have to make sure of that even though it's not uh, basically like line of sight it's not like rays going through each you have to make sure there is enough time for ozone to react if it does not react uh, appropriately it you can have a scenario where this coagulation will not work and you will uh, either uh, damage the activated carbon or flat out uh, damage other things that are you know after it because o3 is very reactive you have to let it time for like okay just chill decompose chill down because if you directly feed o3 active o3 into ro membrane the membrane will be destroyed not not destroyed as in like it won't explode but uh, like you know the efficiency of your ro membranes will go down and then after a while contaminants will start to pass through it so you, we have to make sure o3 is like uh, given enough time to do its magic because you don't want to rush it basically in uv case you have to make sure the exposure is matched in this you have to make sure the time is enough now are there any side effects? if this is the only thing that can take care of biology and chemistry why the heck we don't use it everywhere well it does suffer with one random consequence that if your water source whatever be it river be it uh, deep bore well has bromide into it bromide plus ozone equals cancer 
that's a free, uh, weird problem whatever. and many of you are who are living in america must be familiar about california doing like covering a pond with uh, black balls the reason for that was this it was not to stop evaporation that was a added bonus but uh, the main reason was to make sure the uv uh, uv exposure is gone uh, goes down so bromide was there there was always some bromide but if you have bromide a uh, bit of uh, ozone and a uh, lot of ultraviolet it creates more of it and the water companies that were making bottled water using that reservoir water they were complaining is like dude why the heck you are giving us cancer so you have to understand this is why you, before you use ozone you must check your bromide level if it's below a certain threshold it's like 10 part per million you okay but if it's like anything above that the government will flat out ban you then it's very energy intensive if you are only doing this for biological contamination reasons basically you want to make sure that i'm not going to get sick because of uh, basically cholera or things of that nature it's not very efficient you want to use uv for that sort of scenario now by product it does create by product it's not like uv where you have just like water running through a canal and uv is sterilizing it it will create by products now you, if you filter it out awesome if you don't filter it it's not that those are toxic but uh, it's like carbon dioxide if you have too much of it let's say in case of human environment 13% you did by product has to be taken care of many times you will hear people say fancy things like ion exchange membranes those things are there to just take care of those uh, fancy things now on top of that it's still manageable it's still one of the few things that can help us take care of uh, basically contaminated groundwater because of the irrigation environment and like uh, uh, fertilizer runoff it does suffer from the same problem that uh, uv also suffers from it's basically it's still prone to reinfection basically you can't uh, disinfect the water in one part of the country and send it to another part you have to mix chlorine in again basically everything boils down to this fact can you purify the water the short answer yes very easily we we can do it without any issue can we transport that water from point a to point b without worrying about contamination yes in bottled scenario but if you have to send like a, let's say city worth of water you have to add chlorine this is the biggest uh, roadblock basically that's why nobody is like you know let's just use uv everywhere people are like okay we have to add chlorine to make sure that it's not reinfected let's just add lot of it and chlorine also take care of the same things so this is why ozone is not uh, used everywhere because if you have groundwater that is already contaminated by bromide you have to double check it otherwise you might be exposing yourself to much more uh, much higher cancer risk it's not like you're going to dr drink bromide contaminated water with ozone treatment you're going to die but it will increase your risk so it is something that you have to take into careful consideration now this was my presentation on uh, ozone water treatment i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike i would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and i would uh, ask you to leave a comment because i reply to all of them please subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching